appreciate the uh, chair inviting uh, discussion about the merits of this because when I came in here, I thought we were going to talk about process. But I guess on this issue, process deserves some discussion about the merit of expanding the Medicaid program. You're exactly right, Mr. Chairman. This budget for this year includes $74 million in additional Medicaid costs so that we can get a two-to-one match. What we're talking about under the Medicare expansion program, we're talking about three years where there's a zero to 10 match. Um, the state doesn't put anything into it. Uh, and then afterwards, there's a slightly escalating portion for the state to assume leading up to 10% in 2020. And I don't disagree with the numbers that you are presenting. Um, but I'm starting to think that those numbers will not be as large because Tennesseans will not have access to care. My prediction is you're going to have 30 hospitals closed down in rural parts of this state. I don't know what's going to happen to the Med in Memphis, but I think I know what's going to happen to General in Nashville. And both of those hospitals just don't uh, deal with people from their cities. They deal with people who are life lighted from other counties in the state. Um, so you've got to talk about consequences. I would submit to you, and one of the questions I'm going to ask the Commissioner of the Department of Health, how much money are we putting into now for the safety net? How much money would not be necessary in that safety net program if we expanded Medicaid? Um, the economic impact, all you've got to do is look at our neighbors to the north in the state of Kentucky not really a bastion of liberalism. They have expanded their Medicaid program up there and they've saved 27,000 jobs in the healthcare industry. They have expanded their coverage to the working poor who have no health insurance because they can't afford it. We're talking about people on minimum wage. They've increased coverage to those individuals to the tune of 225,000. The economic impact on the state for expanding Medicare in a positive way is a billion and a half dollars. And they believe that in the years to come, they're going to create another 15 to 20,000 new jobs because of the Medicaid expansion. I thought about inviting the governor of the state of Kentucky down here to talk with us, but I'm a, the reason why I haven't is because I'm not sure we would give him an audience. Um, but if I knew we would give him an audience, I would do that. And I think he would come. Um, this is troubling to me. Uh, not just your resolution. I mean, your resolution basically does what the governor promised it to begin with. Uh, so I, you know, I have respect for you. And I, the governor, if I was the governor, I'd be angry about this resolution. Because to me, it indicates that somebody down here don't trust him. But on the other hand, then I found out that the governor doesn't care about this resolution. And they've removed their flag. So I don't understand that. I really don't understand um, why we're going through this process. I think we really ought to be drilling down and looking at, what, 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 if I was the hospital association, I would go to the governor in this legislature and I'd say, guess what? We're in dire shape. You know, we're losing our, uh, um, our, our dish money. Um, we're losing our dish money. We're laying off people. Vanderbilt's laid off 1,000 people, or, or that was the plan. So St. Thomas Hospital System was in my office yesterday. They're laying off people. I'm trying to find out what's happening in the rural areas of the state because I think some hospitals have already closed. I think three have already closed, and I've been told there's 30 on the watch list. Um, 
my gosh, here we are. If the hospitals came in, if they started getting split and they said, we're not going to do the assessment, that's a billion and a half dollars. We're not going to have health care uh, for the poor in this state. If they did that, and I, surely they're not going to, but I could, uh, I could understand the frustration of their members when they're dealing with what they're dealing and they're not getting much of an ear up here. Uh, again, we had, when TenCare was created, that was a waiver. And the chief executive had the ability to enter into it. And it was a two to one match, two parts federal, one part state. What all the commotion about now is three years of 100% federal. And those that I've heard say, well, the federal government's broke, so we can't take the money. Well, I would submit to those that they look at the current budget because we're about 45% federal in the proposed budget submitted by the governor. So if federal money's bad, why are we just focusing on TenCare expansion? If federal money's bad for the state to use, why are we just focusing on TenCare expansion? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't understand that. I'm sorry, I don't understand it. Thank you.